Well, Baruch Hashem, Shabbat Shalom to everybody. Um, I'm going to give a message today that I hadn't planned on giving. And uh, yeah, sometimes they can be the best ones. And um, this, me- this message I'm going to give today is a message that basically broke me and made me comply, (laughs) if I could (laughs) say it that way. And I think you'll get the gist of what I'm talking about as I go through this message. And basically, the subject matter today is going to be about suffering. And suffering specifically from the perspective of penetrating through the wall of flesh. Penetrating through the wall of flesh. In the last several weeks, I've been going through a lot of different things on a physical level, a spiritual level, uh, an emotional level, a business level, a financial level, uh, a relationship level, um, and there's probably other levels that I haven't thought about what those levels are because I'm overwhelmed sometimes with all of these things coming at me all at the same time. And... Pedro was talking earlier about how he's had to come to grips with um, feeling this sense of over, being overwhelmed to the point that it rises your blood pressure up and you can wind up having a heart attack and that would be a great injustice to his family. And he came to the right conclusion that I cannot go down that road. Well, suffering many times um, can lead us down that road very easily. And there's a very fine line between suffering in the flesh and suffering in the spirit. And sometimes they overlap one another and they are both one and the same, or it at least affects both different dimensions of the flesh and the spirit. The key that I, I have, what I have been going through, is to try to separate the two. And that takes time to work that out in your mind. And it's not an easy thing to do. And in order to do that, you have to come to grips with your flesh and realize that there is a wall that you've got to go through in your flesh. Your flesh is going to do everything it can to preserve itself. And it does not want you, and it is designed to stop you or prevent you from going from the flesh and venturing over into the realm of the Spirit. If I can kind of say it this way, uh, which I'm sure all of you can probably relate to, it's kind of like when you sit down and you begin to pray, and you set your mind that you're going to pray. Initially, you've probably got things on your carnal mind that are plaguing you. Like, what am I cooking for dinner? i got to go to the bathroom. You know, I should have paid this bill. Uh, This person said this, that, and the other, and I'm not, you know, and we have these looping tapes that go on in our mind, and so there comes a point where you have to bring your mind into conformity, and you have to rebuke those thoughts that go on in your mind. Lately, I've been talking about hearing the voice of Yahweh. This works in that realm as well. As long as we're allowing our mind to dictate and run the game, then it's going to be difficult to leave the flesh behind and be able to penetrate into the realm of the spirit. Well, the same is kind of true when it comes to suffering. And that is is that there comes a point where your flesh is screaming and yelling at you so much and is rebelling against the suffering that you're going through that what it wants to do is it wants you to stop trying to penetrate into the spirit so that the flesh is left behind. And it's kind of crucified, if I can say it that kind of way. The bottom line is, is that you, can't, you can run, but you can't hide. I think, for me, the more I've pondered on this, is that, in other words, in this life, as Yeshua says, you will have tribulation. Make no mistake about it. We are not going to get away from suffering in this life. Yet, even psychology if you look at it, has proven beyond a shadow of a doubt that the way the human mind is made up, and I'll say the carnal mind, the way it's made up is that man will do 80% of the time, will do everything in his power to avoid pain 
and only 20% of the time will gravitate towards something that's pleasurable. That's been proven by science. And yet that is the natural makeup of the carnal mind. The carnal mind doesn't want to go through suffering. It wants to just have a good time. It wants to indulge itself in all the pleasures of this world. And so anything spiritual that comes into that world in which it lives in, it is a direct enemy and a threat to its preservation. Yet our goal and our mandate from Yahweh is to crucify the flesh so it no longer has a voice in the say of what you will or will not suffer. So I say you can run, and, but you can't hide, because no matter what happens in this life, suffering is going to chase after you. It will catch you, it will capture you, and it will tread you down, and it will get a hold of you. And I think that in the body of Messiah, we really need to come to a point where we embrace the fact that this suffering is going to come on us. And there's nothing that you can do to stop Yahweh's mandate that you must suffer. Because if we don't bear our execution stake, as Yeshua says, we have no part with Him. So there are some fundamentals that in the body of Messiah we're going to have to come down to. I watch a lot of people, and even myself, when suffering comes, when a trial comes, it's like your first reaction is to shriek. Yet, that it's in that moment... You're in the flesh. That is your sign, as this uh, comedian uses in his comedy act. There's your sign, you know? <laughs> and that is your sign. As soon as you feel like that, that is a sign in the moment your flesh is speaking and dictating to you, oh no, I don't want to have no part with this, or oh, woe is me. But yet, that is actually our opportunity to put Yahweh on the front burner of the line of defense in helping us to deal with whatever it is that we're going to have to suffer at the particular time. Some suffering, as we all know, lasts for a very short period of time. Some of them go on for many years. Some of them will carry through you for the rest of your life. So I'm going to bring out some basic points, and we'll kind of go through them. And so one of the points that I'm going to bring up is about learning obedience through the things that you suffer. Learning obedience through the things that you suffer. I'm giving this message today because, quite frankly, I've been on kind of a hiatus lately, and I've only speaking once in a while. And uh, what, I, what I found this week was I was getting hit with a lot of different sufferings at once, to the point that if I let my flesh really bother me, it, I would then have the sense of being overwhelmed or out of control. And once you allow the flesh to get into that realm, then you begin to get into the realm of anxiety, blood pressure issues, and all the other things, and then everything's out of control. But what I, when I was going through this, I finally, I, I did feel it in a spirit kind of way, and I don't know how else to explain it, in the sense that I'm not going to allow these things in the natural to overtake me, but in the spirit, I was feeling this impression from Yahweh, you, you've got to do something. And that was what I was feeling from Yahweh. And he says, you need to give a message. I said, okay, great, I can give a message. But what is the message? Because I don't have a message. If I had a message, I would give one. And what he was telling me is, this what you're going through is the message that you're going to give. And that's why he gave me this message. And so I said, okay, I'll do it. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know how I'm going to say it yet. But I've got the mandate. This is what you need to do. So right away, I contacted Pedro and asked Pedro if there was an opening to speak. And he says, yes, this would be a good time. <laughs> and uh, he see, I, I could tell through the phone he had a smile on his face. <laughs> but um, as, soon as, as soon as Pedro gave the okay of that, and I made the initiation to make that gesture, I felt all these pressures subside. They didn't go away. They didn't go away. But they, they stayed, but they, it was like backing off. It's, uh, I don't know if any of you have heard that song. It was from a classic rock group. Um, 
what's their name? Um, Sticks. Yes. Oh, yeah. uh, and I don't remember the name of the song, but he's singing about um, the hangman's coming from the gallows and I don't have very long. You know, so it's kind of like you have all these pressures all around you, and it's like the hangman is coming down to get you, and he's going to bring you up from the gallows, and he's going to go ahead and he's going to hang you out on the deck, you know, and so you're about to die soon, in other words, is the point I'm trying to get across. And yet, so it's kind of like the hangman is being told, stay away for now, give him a, a reprieve for now, you know, so it, it's still out there on the fringes, and it's still out there doing its work. And, and so forth, but it doesn't have a dominance in my life. So I felt like this pressure was kind of removed because I did what he was trying to tell me to do. So what's the message? The message is basically is that Yahweh is using these pressures to get me to conform. The suffering is being used to get me to conform. And I'm a little slow of hearing sometimes, but basically I had come to the point where I realized I've got to do something. I don't know what I've got to do, but I've got to do something. And so he said, what you have to do is you have to give this message. So let's look in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 8. It says, even though Yeshua was the son of Elohim, he learned obedience from the things that he suffered. He learned obedience from the things that he suffered. And this is my point exactly because this is what had happened to me. Is Yahweh wanted me to give this message. I didn't have any natural inclinations to give a message this week. Quite frankly, I wasn't in the mood to give a message this week or any week for that matter, for the most part. But it's not about our will. It's about His will and what He wants. I don't know why He wants me to give this message. Except that I will say that I believe this message is going to speak to somebody in their heart and it's going to break them loose and shake them loose from whatever has been hindering them and take them to another level. That I am certain about. And so I can only assume that this message is given because he knows things that's going on in our lives that I don't know. I know a lot, but I, there's some <laughs> things I don't know. But anyway, the thing is, is that it was through the things that he suffered that he learned obedience. Suffering is a great teacher. It gets us to the bargaining table. You know, we have a scripture where Yahweh says, come, let us reason together. And a lot of times I don't want to reason. I want to do my plan, the John plan. I want to go out there and I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it. And we all have that in us. And I think predominantly a lot of us, and I include myself, are so much on the John plan or the Vita plan or the Carmen plan and we really don't consult with Yahweh the way we should, should so that we can get in alignment with His plan about doing His will and not our will. And so then what happens is sometimes what Yahweh has to do is He has to send suffering into our life to get our attention. You see, suffering... The part of the purpose of suffering is to draw something out of you that you don't know is there. It's to draw something out of you that you don't know is there. And so now I want to move on to the concept of suffering for righteousness sake instead of for disobedience sake. And I think it's very important for us as believers that when we are suffering to really take a good, long, hard look at the very nature of whatever that suffering is and try to get an understanding from Abba Father as to why has this come upon me? Because there are things that we sow and we reap. For example, to keep it simple, Pedro's a, an accountant. If you refuse to pay your taxes and the IRS starts knocking at your door, you can't really blame anybody for that except for yourself. Time and chance is going to come into your life and sooner or later your number is going to come up in the IRS and they'll assign an agent to you and they'll come pay you a visit and now you're going to pay with penalties and interest. Been there and done that. I know exactly what that's like. So, but yet I got mad at the, in, in the time, I got mad at the injustice of what I felt the system was doing to me. But it actually was very just. The law is the law. 
And if you break the law, you are going to pay the price for it. So why are you mad at your suffering for something that you sowed and now you're reaping? And you want to blame somebody else because you want to get into a pity party. That is purely of the flesh. And so I don't want to suffer for disobedience sake. Because it doesn't yield really anything except that hopefully at some point you break down and break down and break down until the time finally you get to a point and you say, you know what, I can't play this game no more. This don't work. I'm not having fun with this. There's got to be a better way. And that's the point of those kinds of sufferings because it's at that point you begin to penetrate the flesh and you start to enter into the Spirit and you start to find out what the real reason is is why I'm here and what I'm going through. And now you begin to tap into the realm of suffering for righteousness sake. And boy, do we have a problem in the body of Messiah when it comes to that, don't we? Because I see a lot of people, not necessarily here, but I see a lot of people who know that spiritually they need to take action and do something that's righteous, and they won't do it because their flesh is too uncomfortable to do it. And then they get calamity that comes on their life because they won't be obedient. And they won't institute righteousness in whatever it is that Yahweh's telling them that they need to do. So because of the disobedience, the suffering comes in and it takes hold of your life. And sometimes it's a little bit difficult to distinguish the difference between suffering for righteousness sake and suffering because of disobedience. But it, it is important for us to develop enough maturity to at least go before Yahweh's throne and say, please reveal to me the nature of what I'm going through. Did I do wrong? This is one of the things that the rules that I usually, the cardinal rule that I go by, is when something starts to hit me, the first thing I do is, did I do something? Not somebody else, but did I do something to bring this on myself? Because the flesh is going to say, oh, it's Joe Schmo over there. He's the one that brought this on me. Because we don't want to accept responsibility for our own actions. And so Yahweh is going to use suffering one way or the other. In the end, it's going to be to his advantage. And so depending on which way you go will determine how long you stay in that suffering. Again, like I was saying, the nature of suffering is to draw something out of you. It's for you to try to figure out what is it about the nature of this suffering I'm going through that Yahweh is trying to draw out of me. And so what he wants you to do is he wants you to decrease, which is to be humble, so he can reveal to you the inadequacy that you have inside of you so that he can be increased inside of you. So until he withdraws that negative thing out of you through that suffering, he can't replace it with himself. Every suffering you're going through usually has something to do with some kind of a character flaw that Yahweh wants rooted out of your life. And so... You have to really pay close attention and you have to really want to know what is this? What's inside of me that Yahweh at this stage of my life He wants out of me because you are not going to go to the next level until you come into conformity and alignment with this suffering and break through this wall of flesh and let Him have His way. So let's move on. Let's go here to Matthew chapter 5, verse 10. It says... Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. See, we're supposed to be persecuted and suffer persecution for righteousness. We should not be allowing ourselves to suffer for unrighteous things that we indulge in in this life. Now let's move on to this thing with the flesh. And Shaul talked about this. And if we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, it says, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, because of the surpassing greatness of the revelations, for this reason, to keep me from exalting myself, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan 
to torment me, to keep me from exalting myself. There's a lot in that verse. There's a lot in that verse. The point is, is that Yahweh knows our heart. And he knows our character flaws. And my guess is that what Shaul is saying is, he was a very learned man. He had a lot of wisdom. He had a lot of knowledge. Remember, he went to the same mountain, Mount Horeb, where Mount Horeb is, and he learned directly from Yeshua, not from the disciples, the apostles. For a year, he learned directly from Yeshua. He didn't confer with any men. And he talks about stuff in his letters that you don't hear any of that kind of dialogue from the other apostles. Very unique, deep, deep, deep spiritual concepts. And so my guess is, is that what he's saying is, I know that I'm a loudmouth. I know that I can boast in the flesh because I have all this knowledge from Judaism and now tailored by Yeshua into this faith here. And so he probably can get beside himself and start saying and doing a lot of things that maybe would not further the kingdom in a very, very uh, positive kind of manner. And so Yahweh uses these afflictions to keep him humble, under control, narrowly defined and confined, not to get outside of the realm of the measure that Yahweh has given him. And it's a very easy thing to do. I've done it from time to time where I may have said something or did something and I'm thinking to myself, that's beyond what was given to me. I shouldn't have said that or I shouldn't have done that. So I can understand how that can happen because you get so excited in the spirit, you start running your mouth like we've got people you know, who claim and they start making these dates for you know, these prophecies that are going to take place and they start getting excited and their book sales are going up and all that. And it's very easy for them to start saying a lot of things they really shouldn't be saying because Yahweh didn't give it to them. And we know from Scripture that says that if a person claims to be a prophet and they say something that doesn't come to pass, he is a false prophet. And so he'll have to suffer the consequences. But if you go along with him, you know, the Scripture says, um, receive a prophet and you receive a prophet's reward. Well, I think it works the other way too. If you receive a false prophet, you receive his reward as well. So if a false prophet tells you, come over here and start investing money because this is going to happen, that's going to happen, and it don't happen and it collapses, guess what? Your reward is you lost all your money. And you're going to have to suffer for that because Yahweh has in His Word these principles to keep us from suffering unnecessarily. We're... Look, no matter how perfectly we walk in the Word, it's not going to eliminate suffering. Yeshua couldn't eliminate it. He was perfect. And we're supposed to be emulating Him. So the point is, is that the flesh can be afflicted because Yahweh wants to get our attention that there's something going on that needs to be dealt with. If not, it's like if when I, there are days when I feel great and I'm zipping all over the place and doing that. How quickly I've forgotten Yahweh's mandates of what things that He needs me to do. And I get lazy. I get a little bit lackadaisical. So here comes the suffering again. Another thing that can happen is we can get weighed down. This weighing down, it happened to Tom. How poignant that you gave this testimony about Thursday, you stayed home from work because you sensed he was feeling weighed down. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the circumstances were dictating to him, this is how it is. No, it ain't. <laughs> but how quickly we fall into that. I go through this all the time. I'm looking at the things in the natural with my eyes. I'm hearing things with my ears that are all telling me, you're finished. Kaputs. You're bamboozled. It's over with. We're going to put you out to the pastor. We were having this conversation with Anthony the other day that, bro, maybe we're getting too old and we need to be put out to the pastor. I said, I can't receive that one. And I said, you best not receive that one either. You're younger than me. I said, your best days are still ahead of you. We just got to figure out how to get through this flesh that's dictating to us these things and allow the suffering to teach us some stuff 
so that we can figure out what Yahweh's will is for us. So in Luke chapter 21, verse 34, it says, But watch yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And that's the one I want to really focus on, because we're not into drunkenness, or at least we shouldn't be. Um, and that that day come upon you suddenly like a trap. Man, we are in a society where the cares of this world are... We're just so overwhelmed with so many demands on our life. I go in early in the morning and I think, okay, I've got 10, 12 hours, whatever it is. I'm going to get this and this and this and this. And by the time I get through the day, I didn't accomplish half of what I thought I was going to do because so many other things came in, computer problems, technical problems, machine problems, series of people come walking in unannounced. They want to pitch me this product or that product. They want to talk. I got um, uh, wandering Israelites who will come in unannounced and they want to sit down and fellowship for a while. I won't mention no names. You know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's just all kinds of stuff that happens that you don't have control over that come in and dictate what happens to you that day. You know? I'm joking about the wandering Israelites. Well, they are wandering, but, you know, they wander up into my place. But that's okay. That's okay. So let, let's, let's, think, let's think of some things to consider here. One is, I would say, I'm sorry, you need the verse? Yeah. Luke 21, 34. Yeah. The bottom line is the, care, the cares of this life, like sufferings, is a form of suffering in itself, is going to come no matter what. We have just got to get to the point where we say, I expect it to happen. It's going to happen. It's a natural course of life. The devil's busy. He's always trying to cause distractions and things like that to get us into despair and get us discouraged where we can't do the kind of things that we would like to do. It's going to happen. We just got to embrace it and get through it and not allow it to make us to suffer to the point that we become ineffective. So, I'll say this. I think I said it to, to Pedro. This actually was the other night we were talking, and I said, this is a good point. And uh, I would say this way. Do not blink until the trial is over. Do not blink until the trial is over. This is where so many fail in their sufferings. The pressure gets so tough, whether in the physical, the spiritual, the mental, the emotional, the financial, that you begin to blink and you look for ways out of the trial and the suffering through some other vehicle that does not come from Yahweh. Because Hasatan is always going to come and he's going to give you a counterfeit option to make it look like it's Yahweh's way out or an answer to the prayer so that the pain goes away, but it's not. And so if we don't hear from Yahweh what the nature of this trial is where we can stay totally focused and pressing through this thing till we get to the other side and if you blink and you accept that proposition from the enemy, you're in trouble. Because now a trial or a suffering that maybe would have ended another hour or another day from now goes on for another two years. Because you haven't learned your lesson yet. We're dull of hearing sometimes. We don't go seek Yahweh's counsel. We don't get a word from Him. Instead, we're listening to the carnal mind entertain us with all kinds of other options. Oh, well, I can see it working like this. And I can see it going like that. And yeah, this makes sense like this, and this makes sense like that. It's not from Yahweh. The devil's just trying to get you to dig the hole deeper so you stay down in that pit a whole lot longer because Yahweh had mandated, if she follows my instruction and does not blink, this thing will be over in one hour. But in that same hour, the devil come and he gives you a proposition and now he says, now i got to make this last another, another year. Because she ain't learned this lesson. There's your character flaw. There's your sign. We don't like to admit we got character flaws. But we got a lot of character flaws. And the devil knows exactly what those flaws are. And he sets us up. So that we take the bait. 
And we don't question it. So, you know, you're always going to have these things happen in life. The question is, are you using this vehicle of suffering to teach you very valuable lessons that Yahweh can give you wisdom so that the spirit of discernment can root itself into your life to the point that the next time this joker comes across your path and he tries to proposition you with something, you say, I got your number. I know what you're trying to do. Yahweh's already alerted to me. Because you know why? Because I said no. The first time I said yes, now I'm saying no. You're not going to catch me on this anymore. I've smartened up. I've been to the school. I've graduated from the school. And I'm not going to accept the offer anymore. And Yahweh can say, now there's a wise person. And I can impart to him more power. Because he who's faithful in little will be faithful in much. So don't blink until the trial's over. Stand and wait for his intervention and deliverance. Let him do it the way that he wants. Because I guarantee you this. When that moment comes, and it's a miracle, and you got it, because your employer took you right back. And we talked about that. They had to learn their lesson. They messed up. They persecuted you and made you suffer for wrong reasons. And they swallowed it, and they admitted they were wrong about it. And they brought you back on your terms, and for higher pay. Baruch Hashem. This is how the Father works. Meanwhile, you had to suffer. You had to suffer. You had to suffer because your suffering gives time for the other party to get to the point where they need to get to where you have convergence. Convergence is when you have all the elements coming together and they all meet at the same moment. That's called a miracle. And that's what you got yesterday. Praise the Father because He's watching. And it, and your heart will get weighed down, but that's that breaking through that flesh I'm talking about. you got to deny it. And, 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 and your wife stayed home with you to give you encouragement that day. And we all need to do that with one another. We need to shore one another. You know, when Moses and Israel were at war, whenever his arms were getting tired and he would drop, they would begin to lose the battle, so the men would hold up his arms. That's what mishpachah is all about. That's about pulling for one another. You know? That's why I got concerned with you, Sharon, because I didn't hear any more testimonies about that blessing. And I said, now I'm going to her because I know how the devil can work and he can give it enough time that the circumstances change and the ink don't get on the paper. And so we made it happen in two days. Three days. And it's done now. It's sealed. And she's got her blessing. Amen. And matter of fact, while I'm talking about it, Abba Father, in the name of Yeshua, I pray for this woman, Diana. Yes. She, she's a Jewish woman, and she blessed Sharon with this blessing of giving her a house and pension or whatever money it is, and you've shown favor. And I pray, Abba, that you bless this woman, because that takes a very special heart to do what she did. And I just pray that you bless her in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. There'll be a place for her when the time comes with a heart like that. Okay. In Psalm chapter 32, verse 7, it says, You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Carmen came to the house and in essence gave songs of deliverance. She uplifted your spirits. She didn't let you stay alone. You're dangerous when you're alone anyway. I don't blame you. So anyway... Tell that to the driveway. Yeah, I know. Uh, I can picture that. Okay. So the thing is, is that he can hide us. You can't find that hiding place if the flesh is yelling and screaming at you and you're entertaining what it's telling you. You've got to crucify that flesh and embrace the nature of the suffering because it's ordained by Yahweh. Whether Yahweh does it directly or the devil comes, you know, either way, Yahweh's going to use it to his advantage. It's just best that we get in alignment and accept the fact that we're going to suffer and it's for our best benefits. 
And so, what does that mean? What that means is, it's his battle, not yours. He ordained it. And if he ordained it, it means he's not going to fight a battle that he can't win. But we don't believe that. And that's our battle. Our battle is to tell the flesh, sit down and shut up. He's told me, this trial has come upon me, he don't let no battle come on me unless he's in it, and he's going to fight to win. I just got to get an agreement that he has the capability to be able to do that. Instead, the flesh says, oh, well, I can't fight that kind of war. You best not even get involved with that one, you know, and you go running for the hills. Well, then that's your war. That's not his war. So who, who is it that's the general in, in command here? Is it the flesh or is it Yahweh, Abba Father? So in Jeremiah, uh, okay, so your battle is to tell the flesh to submit itself to the torment. That is contrary to human nature. Contrary to human nature. Your battle is to tell the flesh to submit itself to torment. I'd almost say, in a way, Yahweh is saying we need to gravitate towards it. Remember when the apostles were preaching the name of Yeshua out in the streets? Yeah. And they beat them and stuff, and they told them not to preach in that name anymore? And they let them out of the prison? They went right back out the same day and started preaching again. These guys, these boys were gluttons for punishment. They didn't mind getting there. took us whooped. But, you know, the human nature is we want to run from this stuff. Oh, I best not go out there again. But if Yahweh tell you to go out there again... That's a defining moment. You better decide what you're going to do very quickly and don't be hesitant about it. In Jeremiah chapter 15, verse 20, it says, I will make you a wall to this people, a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but you will not, they will not, overcome, but will not overcome you. For I am with you to rescue you and save you, declares Yahweh. The battle's already won in the spirit realm. It's already won. We just got to get up the courage to face the suffering that's got to go through it in order to get to the other side. And the sooner that we embrace suffering into our life, the more productive we're going to be, the more faith we're going to have, the more fruit you're going to have, the more of Yahweh's gifts of the Spirit you're going to have, the more you're going to hear His voice and know His perfect will, and know the full riches of Yeshua HaMashiach, as He can deliver, because as I spoke before, about the difference between a servant and a friend. A servant doesn't get to know all the inside information. Only those who are a friend of the Messiah is the inner group, is the inner circle that gets that intimate understanding. Suffering is a vehicle that gets us there, if we'll embrace it. So here's another one for you, Tom. Don't lose heart. You will reap in due season. You see, one thing I've learned over the years when you're going through suffering and trials, when the heat gets at its most fervent point, when it looks like all hell is breaking loose in your life, and it looks like you are done, that's it. They're going to cart me off now. And if they don't, they're going to put me in a straight jacket because I'm going to go nuts and I can't take it no more. That is a sign that your victory is right on the other side of that door. Because the devil only attacks when he feels threatened. And when he attacks with incredible vitriol like that, that is a sign you should be celebrating my victory and this suffering is about to end. It's about to end. But, don't get too cocky either. Because as soon as you're done with that suffering, there's another one in queue waiting for you. Because one promotes you to the next higher level. And you don't get to the next higher level until you deal with the one that's underneath. In Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, it says, Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time or due season, we will reap if we do not grow weary. Notice due season. 
Yahweh has mandated a season for the harvest, which is why we celebrate the feast days. They are shadow pictures of the harvest. Well, in like manner, it, you also have seasons in your life where you're about to reap things. Think about it this way, Tom. If they didn't let you go, you wouldn't have gotten these other customers as side work. So now you got a double dose because now you still have some of these customers you yeah. make contact with that you can still do at home, which gets you out of the honeydew list. And um, but now you have the new job with with uh, the old job back right. with less hours, which means you have extra hours to do the other work yeah. and a higher pay. Yep. Who can beat that one? <laughs> but the point is, is that Yahweh had given a season for how long this was going to last. He knows how long you're going to be able to endure this. And you are coming to the end of your rope. But you still hung on, and at the last moment, he sends in the deliverance. And he gives the answer to the prayer. Alright. Don't let your eyes deceive you into hearing the wrong voice. Don't let your eyes deceive you into hearing the wrong voice. Your eyes are a tool by the enemy to put circumstances in front of you that is so contrary to what Yahweh's promise is for you in the suffering that you're going through. And the enemy's benefit is this. If the enemy knows you have not seeked Yahweh's understanding about the nature of the trial you're going through, the suffering you're going through, that means you're going through a suffering that you have absolutely no clue as to why it's happening. So then it's easy for him to bring something out in the natural in front of you that is a contradiction to the reality that is in the spirit realm that has not been imparted to you either because you haven't sought it or you don't have the maturity level yet to get it or you're not hearing it right or you're not seeing it right. And so the devil will use that strategy to take advantage of your ignorance and get you to take the bait of what your eyes are seeing as the way out, as the so-called miracle, but it's not a miracle at all. It's a rancid piece of bait. Yeah. Buyer beware, as it says. Yeah. It's kind of like going into a car lot, you'd buy a car, you see the outside of the car, it looks so beautiful, you know, the inside of the car looks so beautiful. You know, I had that happen to me yeah. once when I was a kid, you know. I, I, there was a car that I wanted, you know, it was $250, you know. <laughs> went and got the car, cranked it up, went down the street, the thing crapped out on me two blocks away. And then I had to have my six foot five, 275 pound father come with me and bully the guy into giving me back my money, you know. But the point is, I didn't really check the engine. You buy a car, everything looks good, but if you're really looking at the guts inside this thing, it ain't what it appears to be. And so a lot of times these, these uh, propositions that are given to us are not what they appear to be. <laughs> Buyer beware. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 6. Let no one deceive you with empty words. For because of such thing, Yahweh's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Disobedience means you are ignorant to what Yahweh's will is for you in your circumstances that you're going through, the suffering you're going through. If you don't know the nature of why you're suffering, you're in a heap of trouble. Because that means you're a double-minded person and you're going to get tossed back and forth like the waves of the ocean because you ain't got no idea where you're going to go. It's going to take you wherever it's going to take you. And you'll end up on a shoreline somewhere where you ain't going to want to be and it's a long swim back. I got tired after so many years of swimming. My arms are weary. They are tired of swimming. There's got to be an easier way. And so I spend a lot of time trying to ask Yahweh, what is going on here? Why is this happening? And I don't move until I get a word about it. I don't move. Because if I do, I'm going to make it worse. And I'm getting tired of getting beat up like that. I don't mind to get beat up, but if I get beat up because of my own disobedience, then it's worthless. 
you know, it's like the old saying, some people are gluttons for punishment. I was glutton for punishment for many years. I'm not so much a glutton for punishment anymore. I really don't, you know, unnecessarily, I don't like it. Okay. Don't let your ears hear things that speak contrary to your divine outcome. Don't let your ears hear things that speak contrary to your divine outcome. Do you know what your divine outcome is in this matter? Can you really truly say, I know with, with precision what Yahweh is doing in me right now in the nature of this trial, this suffering I'm going through? And if you can't, don't make a move until you really, really know what it is. With absolute precision and certainty. Because if you move outside of that realm, you're moving into your realm, which is the realm of Hasatan. It's the realm of the flesh. And we can't do that. You know, there's something to be said about getting older. When you're a young um, whippersnapper, so to speak, you think you're invincible. You know, nothing much bothers you, you know. And you can take these beatings and get away with it for a while. But there's something about getting older. Anthony and I talk about this a little bit now and then. And that is there's this thing about the spirit of mortality begins to set in on your consciences. And you begin to realize, you know, the clock is really ticking quite quickly. And I don't know how much time I got left. And then you begin to realize, you know what, I really need to get real about my life. Because... If I only got a couple of years left, based on where I know I'm at right now, where I know I need to be, I'm going to have to do some really, really serious growth in the next couple of years if Yahweh don't pull the plug on me tonight when I go to bed. When you're younger, you don't think about that stuff. You think you're going to live forever, and you think you can keep going all this stuff, and you'll figure it out eventually. You don't have that luxury when you get older. And so I look at mortality as a positive thing in the sense that it's a great motivating force in my life to help me to start getting real with myself and realize that my past does not have to equal my future, that Yahweh has already written something different for me if I can get in alignment with it. Embrace the suffering. Don't you think I know that you don't have much time left on this earth? Don't you think I know that the work I'm doing in you it is his work. It's not our work, right? The work that I'm trying to do in you, I've got to accelerate this thing now because you've prolonged this thing for so long. Now we've got to go through a crash course. It's going to get painful. It's going to get tough because I've decided I've got great things for you to do, but you ain't going to do it because you ain't qualified yet to get to that point. And so we've got to go through some rough stuff. Are you willing? Are you willing? In Matthew chapter 13, verse 16, it says, But blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. We read through the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapter 3. Blessed is he who has eyes to see and ears to hear. Those are all about instructions, about character flaws. Go read them. They're all character flaws. Some of them far worse than others. And all of the six out of the seven different categories of the called out ones that he analyzes are all reprimanded and they're going to have a bad time if they don't conform. And it's the Philadelphians that don't have any kind of correction. And they're the ones that have Yahweh's name written on their foreheads. So we should strive to be Philadelphians in spirit. Um, okay. Don't let anger at your suffering circumstance set in. Don't let anger at your suffering circumstances set in. Because at that point, resentment is the next thing to follow. Then it's bitterness, and then it's unforgiveness, and we just go on down the line, and it goes downhill from there. And really, in essence, what you're doing is you're holding a grudge against Yahweh himself when we take that position. We are angry. How dare? Now, we don't a lot of times see Yahweh as the one who's doing it. We see it as other human beings are doing it. 
We see it as maybe how Satan is doing. Surely Yahweh wouldn't let this come on me because I'm perfect. There's nothing wrong with me. I ain't done nothing. But yet, here we are. And it's that denial of self-guilt is the very character flaw that Yahweh is trying to draw out of you through the vehicle of that suffering. But we're so hardened in our heart, we don't want to see it. Is there. The hardest thing for man is to admit that he's been wrong. And so when somebody tells us we're wrong, we don't want to hear that. We want to rebel. It is the vehicle that will catapult you to the next level. See, each one of these sufferings we go through leads us to one to another. If we look at Yeshua's life, we see that he went through one suffering after another. Mostly in the beginning, it was verbal. The rabbis came against them. They ridiculed them and so forth. And then as it got closer and closer to that final Passover, you know, finally, we're going to kill this guy. They pick up the stones. He has to leave the temple area. And he doesn't come back to the temple area. And then they finally arrest him out in the garden. It finally got to the point where Hasatan saying, I can't take this no more. But it really wasn't Hasatan anyway. It was the father had mandated, this is the season. Every one of these sufferings and trials has a season. And he had to fight through his flesh. His flesh was screaming and yelling at him. Please don't let me go through this. If there's another way, let's do it another way. But yet he knows the Father's will. There is no other way. This is the way it's going to go. Get in alignment with this. In James chapter 3, verse 14, it says, But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition... In your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. We've got to be true to ourselves. Again, it comes back to this suffering thing about understanding the nature of this suffering. What is the truth about why I'm going through what I'm going through? There are things that I went through for many, many years. It was like a, like a weed in the garden, you know? You, you cut, it off, cut it off with a weed eater. And then two weeks later, it's right back up again. You cut it off, it's right back up again. You cut it off, it's right back up You start getting frustrated after a while. I'm going to go in there and rip this thing out of the roots. And that's the mentality that we have to have with these spiritual strongholds that come into our lives that make us suffer sometimes unnecessarily. And we need to grab it by the root and we need to pull it out so it don't come anymore. I'm tired of this. Let me go into something new. Let me get this character flaw out of my life so I can be productive at that level and then that launches me or qualifies me to that next level wherever Yahweh wants to take you anger at your suffering will take you will never take you to your divine appointment quickly know what I'm saying anger at your suffering will never take you to your divine appointment quickly in other words if you're going to have a pity party and you're going to get angry about what you're going through, and you're not going to go to Yahweh and ask Him, why am I going through this? What is the nature of this trial? Reveal it to me. I expect an answer. I expect an answer. If you're putting this on me, then doggone it, tell me what this is about. Get bold and challenge Him. In a certain kind of defiant way, not defiance in rebellion, but defiance is, I want to know this. If you put it in my life and I'm not supposed to know it, that's an oxymoron. If you put it in my life, it's because I'm supposed to know what this is about. I want to know. Tell it to me. And let's move on to the next one when we conquer this. When I give you power and authority to dictate this in my life and take control over this thing. But if you sit there and you stay angry about it, and you're bitter and you're resentment, you're going to sit there a long time. Been there, done that. I spent years going through stuff that never got over. But it will be used instead to frustrate you and bring you into compliance or force you out of His will until you do. One way or the other. Remember the story of Jonah? Didn't want to cooperate. Yeah. Yahweh had a mandate. You will go preach this word. We can do it plan A. Yeah. Or we can do plan B. That's it. Plan A is, just go along with what I'm saying, get on the boat, and go. Plan B is, it's going to take three extra more days. 
I'm going to swallow you up in fish guts, and I'm going to vomit you out on the shoreline, and then you're still going to go do what I want you to do. But doggone it, you're going to get in alignment. Either you're going to do it my way, or you're going to do it my way. just depends on what your philosophy is going to be. So, either way, you're going to get squeezed so you can't take it no more. He knows what your limitations are. And sooner or later, he will get leverage with you, or you'll be booted out. And there will be many who will get booted out. In Romans chapter 8, verse 7, it says, Because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards Elohim, for it does not subject itself to the law of Elohim, nor is it not even able to do so. That's the flesh. The flesh is going to always be giving you a plan B. Take plan B and make it plan A. That's its philosophy. That's its philosophy. And our job is to put checks and balances to make sure, like I'm saying again, got to know what is the nature of the trial or the suffering I'm going through. What is it in me that is flawed that is causing this kind of a problem? And I must go after it and root it out. Another point. Use your time of affliction which prevents you from functioning in the physical to accomplish in the spirit what you cannot do in the flesh. Use your time of affliction which prevents you from functioning in the physical to accomplish in the spirit what you cannot do in the flesh. Case in point. My foot, my Achilles tendon was giving me a lot of trouble um, all this week. And so I would sit at work and I would ha I, I keep a frozen bottle of ice, you know, a water bottle. Freeze it to ice in the freezer. And I have to put it there and take my shoe off and put my heel on top of the water bottle for like a half an hour because it's swollen. You know, you need... I'm, and Sharon, thank you because... It kept hitting me early in the week. You made a statement quite a while, maybe a year or so ago. Until the swelling goes down, healing cannot take place. Right. Right. So you could say that mm -hmm. suffering is a kind of swelling. Mm -hmm. And until the swelling goes down, the healing and going to, to the next level isn't going to take place. Mm -hmm. You're going to stay in a swollen state mm -hmm. until this thing gets licked and then the healing can take place. You go... Oh, now I really understand this. And now you're more empowered and you're ready to break through and go to the next level. So I would, I would sit at my desk and I'd have to do a lot of emails and other stuff like that. So I'd put my foot there, but then I have my phone out and I'm putting notes because the Ruach is speaking to me. And a lot of these points that I have here are points that he was given to me through the week. So even though I'm afflicted and I can't walk very well and it wouldn't do good for me to walk because it's going to irritate the swelling, I'm sitting there and I'm still doing in the spirit what I couldn't do in the flesh. I'm accomplishing something. Don't feel sorry for yourself. It's not about that. Yahweh doesn't feel sorry for you. So why should you? In Psalm chapter 31 verse 7 it says, I will rejoice and be glad in your steadfast love because you have seen my affliction. You have known the distress of my soul. He knows. He knows. But he's measured the level of suffering in your life relative to what he knows about the distress in your soul and what it can handle. What does the scripture say? That he'll not put a trial on you greater than what you can bear, but through the same trial make a way of escape that you can bear it or endure it. Which goes back to what I was saying from the beginning. Endure the trial. Do not blink until it's over. When he says this, it's like the old saying, it ain't over until the fat lady sings. When the fat lady sings in Yahweh's kingdom, that's when you can move on. Until then, you stay steadfast in that trial. Because that trial is your salvation. As strange as it may seem, that trial is your salvation. That is a test. That is your schooling. We're taught that the Torah is our schoolmaster, that it brings us to Messiah. These trials are extracted from Torah principles into our lives as a school teacher. And it's supposed to bring us to Yeshua. But a lot of times we're screaming out, I don't like this. I don't want to go through this. This is crazy. You know, what can I do to get out of it? 
So we don't want to be school uh, school mates. We don't want to learn what the Torah is trying to teach us. We don't rebel against it. Labor pains must come. Expect it. Labor pains must come. Expect it. My daughter's about ready to give a baby here any day now. And she's getting the labor pains. That tells you something is coming. Something's about to give birth. In regards to the suffering, when you come through the suffering, you break through that wall of flesh, and you come out on the other side, something has been birthed in you, because you are not the same person you were the day before. Something shifted. Something changed in your character. The flaw that you had yesterday has been refined and used for something positive now, and you cannot go back and revisit it the same way you could before. So accept it. Labor pains are going to come. Accept it. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 19 it says, Oh my dear children, I feel as if I'm going through the labor pains for you again. And they will continue until Messiah is fully developed in your lives. Note that. Fully developed. We are going through these sufferings because he is not fully developed. Yeshua went through his final suffering because he was fully developed. And it was his season, it was his time. There was no more need to stay here on the earth and go through any more suffering. He had already endured everything he was supposed to endure. And so Shaul is talking here that he himself is going through a kind of labor pains, sufferings, and trials on their behalf because he has not seen Yeshua fully developed in them yet. Suffering is a vehicle to bring the fullness of Messiah into your life. So that we can be defined and we understand ourselves as he sees us, not how Hasatan tells us we are. Too many of us are listening to what Hasatan is telling us we are. Oh, you're pathetic. You're a loser. You'll never be anything. Oh, we should retire and go out to the pastor, as we were talking the other day. We're too old now. We're just going to sit it out. I'll do the best I can. No, that's not good enough. There's a, I'll tell you, to me, in the natural, there's, there's an appealing vocabulary to that. Because the way I feel in my flesh a lot of times in the last year, that appeals to me. I'd like to go off somewhere and sit on a beach with iced tea. You know? Yeah. And with my bald head, I don't even mind if there's not an umbrella. If I could be on that beach with the tea, that'd be good for me. But that's not what Yahweh called us for. That's not what He called us for. So we have to allow these sufferings to bring the fullness of Yeshua into our life to mold and shape us into whatever it is the Father's trying to do as a work. And rejection of that only impedes that process and slows it down. And I believe that's why the scriptures talk about how in the kingdom there'll be different bodies radiating different levels of light. Okay? Our bodies will all radiate a glorification. And some of us will have a lot of light, some of us will have lesser light, and some of us are just going to be a candle flicker. And I believe that that is directly related to your overcoming and character, righteous character that Yahweh's trying to develop in this life. And there's some people who are just going to barely squeak through. But those who are doing a lot, who are called the greatest in the kingdom, those are the ones who are going to have the higher level uh, within the government and the structure that Yahweh sets up on the earth in those days. Okay, so let's move on. What's that? Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Another point: your current victories in your sufferings are an endorsement for being able to stand during the hour of trial that will come on the earth. Let me say it again: your current victories of these sufferings that you go through, if you embrace them, in your sufferings are an endorsement for being able to stand during the hour of trial that will come on the earth. See, what I'm saying is is that if the hour of trial came on the earth right now, we'd probably all die of heart attacks. If it's 20 years from now, let's say. 10 years from now. 5 years from now. 
I'm not, I don't think I'm ready for it, personally. If I was ready for it, I think the hour of trial would already be here. So, what I'm saying is that every time you go through another level, from faith to faith and glory to glory, it endorses you to the next level. See, we are being desensitized to the world and being sensitized to the kingdom of Yahweh. And so, those sufferings endorse you and prepare you for the hour of trial that's going to come on the earth because we're told in Scripture, men's hearts are going to fail them when this time comes. And if you haven't been groomed, shaped, and molded into this process of what I'm talking about, this is Yahweh's process. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. And so He's forcing the bride of Messiah to start getting real with herself and start the cleaning up the process, we can't go on as, as we have in the past. Something has got to change. It's kind of like a husband that has a wife who keeps going out and sleeping with other men. And he's saying, okay, you know, I keep forgiving you, but you keep doing it. Enough is enough now. I'm not putting up with this anymore. Now I'm going to start tightening the screws on you. Either you conform and you stop this destructive behavior to our marriage, or I'm giving you a divorce. You're out, one or the other. But it's not going to continue the same anymore. And I believe that's in essence what Yahweh is doing uh, with us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57 says, uh, but thank Elohim, he gives us victory over sin and death through our master, Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach. We already have the victories. We just don't see them. But if you can take each battle, you take a war, you don't win a war by itself, you win it by fighting battles inside of that war. And every time you take more ground, you start to get stronger. You don't think the way you used to think. You don't feel the way you used to feel. You don't reason the way that you used to reason. Things start to shift and change. And once you get a taste of that, you don't want to go back to the old way anymore. Once you get a taste of it, you don't want to go back. So we have victory over sin and death, which is the last enemy. Another point. Our suffering is someone else's breakthrough. Our suffering is someone else's breakthrough. What do I mean by that? What I mean is sometimes you might see a brother or sister who's going through some kind of an affliction or something like that. Pedro, you talked about it. Shoot, you, there's an example. You're talking about how you're feeling the pain and the anxiety of this person who's all up in arms about all the stress that they're under and so forth like that. So you, you take it on personally, but then what you do is you're like a priest. Your job is to take the transgression and offer it up before Yahweh so it can be cleaned and atoned for. So that it goes away. So it's not imputed anymore. And so we bear one another's burdens and we suffer for one another. And that becomes somebody else's breakthrough. And boy, do some of you need it. Okay, and uh, let's move on. Suffering builds endurance for the greater trials that are out in front of you still. Yes. Suffering builds endurance for the greater trials that are out in front of you still. You have new things waiting for you in queue, as I said before, that is going to come. You're just not ready for it yet. Until you get through this suffering, you cannot prom be promoted to the next one. And the next one's going to be more intense. I can tell you, I've been, mine are getting more and more intense. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, it says, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 4, In everything we do, we show that we are ministers of Yahweh. We patiently endure troubles and hardships and calamities of every kind. Patiently. We have to take them with patience. We have to take it with patience. It's when we become impatient, there's your sign. You're in the flesh. Just like that, you're in the flesh. And if you don't get it under control real quick, you're going to stay in the flesh, and the flesh is going to tell you exactly how we're going to do this. And I'm going to get you into a whole lot more trouble than you're already in. Okay, so let's move on to the next point. Ultimately, the purpose of suffering is so that the sons of Elohim will be revealed. 
The whole purpose of this, so the sons of Elohim can be revealed. And the scriptures even tell us that even the earth is going through sufferings. Mm-hmm. Right. For the whole purpose of the revealing is the sons of Elohim, which is us. Even the earth, which is kind of inanimate, the animal kingdom, which is animate, the animal kingdom, the plants, the trees, fish, you know, all the creation is going through this, this turmoil. Because of the transgressions on the earth, which is what? Character flaws of men. Because men are doing more evilness and more wickedness as the end times come. Where we're supposed to be going the other way. We're not supposed to be going with them. We're supposed to be going the other way. And the more they go that way, and the more we go that way, the more they have a divide between righteousness and unrighteousness begins to become more apparent. Which is what brings in the persecution. Which is more suffering. We are being groomed for the suffering. In Romans chapter 8 verse 19 it says, The creation waits in eager expectation for the revelation of the sons of Elohim. The creation waits in eager eager expectation. It's like, have you ever had something in your life that you can hardly wait for it to come? You know, it's common. You know, I don't know what it is. Um... Maybe you get married or whatever. Maybe now that wouldn't be so important. But <laughs> I'm just joking. But you know, whatever it is in this life that you're, you're just like you're hanging on, and you can just it can't get here fast enough. You know, and this is the the wording that is giving us that the 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 creation is waiting for this event. So this event hinges on you, and it hinges on you embracing the suffering that is mandated for your life. Um, let's see here. The present sufferings of this age are, uh, wor- are not worthy to be compared to the glory that's about to be revealed. So in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's about to be revealed. And so what does that mean? What that means is what we're going through now. Everything's relative. Look, I'll put it this way. If you think back now to like when you were 10 years old, let's say, and you had some kind of a difficulty going on in your life at the time. I don't know, whatever it is. But to you, at 10 years old, your world was coming apart. Right? Can you visit that time in your life? I'm sure you can. When you look back at that now, what does that seem like to you? Insignificant. Because why? In this life, everything is relative. Okay? So in that age, it meant the world was coming apart. When you look back at it now, if it was to happen to you at now, like, I kicked that thing over in like three seconds, you know. It has no effect on me whatsoever. Why? Because you got endorsed to this level now where you can see it that way. And so what we're going to do is when we're in the kingdom, when we look back and we think about the things we get there, like you went through cancer, you're going to look back, May, and you're going to say, that was nothing. I would have endured 10, 20 times, 50 times that. I would have been willing to die on my bed with that cancer, and go through that pain and suffering to be where I am right now. Would you not? It makes you strong. Now, it might be hard. It makes you strong. No, I don't mean that. What I mean is comparing that process Mm -hmm. to when you're already in the kingdom, when you're looking backwards. It's going to seem like nothing. You might not even remember it. It's so insignificant. My point is, that's why I gave the analogy about when you're 10 years old. You probably don't think about those trials anymore. It's so far away in the past, it's so passe, it means nothing to you. It's insignificant little blip on the, on the map of your life. So I think the same thing is here. When we get into the kingdom, we're going to look back and we're going to say to ourselves, I would, man, I wish I could have suffered more. I really think we're going to think, I wish I could have suffered more. Or I wish I could have condensed the sufferings if I could have only understood what Yahweh was doing. Get past it. Let's go on to the next one. Yeshua pressed in for the sole purpose of suffering unto death. That was his goal. He antagonized them people. He tore them to pieces trying to entice them to kill him. He didn't hold back. He didn't try to prevent it. Suffering drives you to an unrealized divine destiny and fulfillment in your life. Suffering drives you to an unrealized divine destiny and fulfillment in your life. 
See, before the suffering comes, before the trial comes, we don't know Yahweh's sending it. Most of the time, it hits us like a, a back truck where you're sideswiped. And then you're stunned initially. And you're like, oh my gosh, what's going on? What do I do? You know? But inside of that suffering is a divine destiny for your life. You have to unravel it. It's like a mystery. You have to peel it back and try to understand it. And then through that understanding, Yahweh gives you a strategy, a divine strategy of how to go through it systematically until you reach the end without blinking. He don't want you to blink. You blink, you're done. We're going to start all over again, and now it's going to set you back. There are some games we used to play as a kid. I don't know if it was Monopoly. You hit the wrong part of the board when you threw the dice. You lose ten spaces, and you got to go all the way back. That got frustrating, especially when everybody's passing you by. In 2 Corinthians, uh, let's see. It's a revelation about who you really are. That's what it's about. It's, about, it's a revelation about who you really are. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, it says, The weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they are divine power to, mol- to demolishing strongholds. I talked about this, I think it was in the Colossian series. One of the main purposes for Yahweh sending His Ruach, aside from salvation, one of the main mandates and purposes is for us to go into the spirit realm and pull down spiritual demonic strongholds and destroy that kingdom. We're to go into the kingdom of darkness with the kingdom of light and overtake it. That is a divine mandate when you read through Colossians. We are supposed to do that. And so it's hard to do that when you're stuck in the same suffering and trial for years and years and years and you still don't know why it's on you. The devil got you right where he wants you. You're ignorant, you're an ignoramus, you're a moron, and you have absolutely no clue as to what's actually happening to you spiritually. And you're going to stay stuck there, and therefore you're not a functioning member of the body of Messiah who's going into the kingdom of darkness to try to destroy the demonic strongholds that exist there in your life, in the life of other people, and so forth, to the further the kingdom. So suffering empties out the well of built-up pain and frustration. Suffering empties out the well of built-up pain and frustration. When we're going through suffering, it's because we, through that suffering, we build up a well. And it's filled with pain and suffering. Yahweh wants to empty that well out. He doesn't want you with pain and suffering. He wants a shalom peace on your lives that surpasses all understanding. He wants us to be more than conquerors in Yeshua. He wants us to be victorious in Yeshua. He wants us to have the all wisdom and spiritual understanding that Shaul talked about. That third level of conversion. That when something has happened to you, you know immediately what the devil's doing. You know the nature of the trial because Yahweh's revealed to you. And he's giving you the strategy how to break through the whole thing. Whether it's for you or for somebody else where you give them a word of knowledge. That's what he wants. He wants to empty you out so he can fill something else in there, which is his fruit, his gifts of the Spirit, more faith, to be able to do the kind of things for the kingdom that he wants you to do. He wants you to go from being a servant to a friend of Yeshua. So that ultimately... When we get to the final phase of this whole thing, we are ready to be sons of Elohim. The earth is ready to give birth to this this family of Yahweh. And we will be able to do great exploits for Yahweh. Let's not shriek back on suffering in our life when it comes. Let's instead embrace it. Let's ask Abba Father to show me the first reaction should be, Abba, why has this come into my life? Show me what is going on inside of me that this is happening. Sometimes burdens come upon you because it's not about you at all. Sometimes it's because it's about somebody else who's suffering and you're feeling in the Spirit their affliction, which means you need to get an understanding because that means you need to pray for that person. That happened to my sister-in-law a year ago. They were in Columbia going for a doctor's test. I didn't know it, but I was sick unto death for a day and a half. 
And then Yahweh told me, I said to him, what is going on? I feel like I'm going to die. It's like death is in my body. And he says, you need to pray for your sister-in-law. You need to pray. And I prayed. The next day, I got an answer from my wife. They were at the doctors. They said they had, that she had cancer. And she was scared because she thought she was going to die from the cancer. And so I had to intercede on her behalf. And then the report came back in another kind of way where it was okay. So what was I feeling? I was feeling the oppression and the, 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 the spirit of death, of the fear of death inside her body. And I had to rebuke that and pray for that. And that after that, the whole thing went away from me. This is what I'm talking about. Suffering comes in different forms. It wasn't my point to get into all that kind of stuff. It, it's for, it's the point here is to bring out principles and points that you have to search and ask Abba Father in your own life, what is the nature of this trial? And help me not to blink in the process and lose this battle. Because it brings shame on Yeshua and it brings shame on the Father. And we are not to be doing that. So let's go ahead and close in prayer. Abba Father, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we just want to thank you again for this Shabbat. We bless you and we, we just ask, Abba, that, that our words be your words, that your thoughts are our thoughts, and that, Abba, that we are doing everything that we can to try to understand your will and do what it is that you want us to do, Abba. Help us to break through this flesh. Help us to get to the point, Abba, where we can become productive members of the body of Messiah, to break in on spiritual strongholds and help, Abba, this kingdom to reach other people and get to the point, Abba, where your people are called by your name, will be doing great exploits, as Yeshua says, that we will do greater works than he did. And so for that, we thank you for those promises. Help us, Abba, to reach and attain those levels in our walk in faith with Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen.